Thanks, John Luke. And as John Luke said, uh, my name is David Waring, and I am the data curator for T3. And as curator, one of my main jobs is helping readers get their data into the database. So I'm going to be talking about data management in T3 and sort of give a brief high level over overview of how to get data into the database, uh, specifically field trials, and then also how to get data out of the database and start exploring some of the data that we have already existing in the database. So the first thing I want to discuss, uh, sorry, I'm just going to try to close the Zoom window here. So the first thing I want to discuss is this concept of a digital ecosystem. And basically the idea of that is that all of your reading data can exist from start to finish within the same system. And T3 Breedbase aims at becoming a digital e ecosystem. And it can do this by providing tools that are required for data management along each stage of the breeding cycle. So there are tools available that can help you create field trials, um, tools that can help you record those observations. Those observations can be stored within the database. And then the website has tools that allow you to summarize and analyze those results, which will then help you choose your next round of field trials. So I'm gonna be discussing some of the tools that are available for each of these stages in the breeding cycle. So the first is creating field trials. So the digital ecosystem way of creating a field trial is using this trial design tool. And that is an interactive wizard on the website that has guided steps that help you create a new trial in the database. So basically it has step-by-step -step instructions on how you can choose a location or locations. Uh, so you can select multiple locations and create multiple trials all with one run of this trial design tool. You select a design type for the field, um, then you can choose the different parameters based on that design type that you choose. And then you give it a list of accessions or germplasm lines that are used as entries in those trials. And then there's also another option that's available if you don't wanna use this trial design tool. So for example, if you already have an existing trial or if you already have a method that you prefer for creating your trials, you can still manually upload your trials to the database. And you can do this by creating an Excel template that describes the trial and plot layout. And then you upload that file to the database and we'll create the trials for you. So here I have some screenshots of the trial design tool so that you can kind of see what it looks like. And on this first page here is where you enter some of the trial metadata. So at the top here, you can choose your locations for the trials. You can um, enter some of the information about the trial, so it's, uh, such as the year of the trial and the plot and field sizes. And here you choose the design type for the field trial. You can choose from a bunch of different um, design types that Breedbase supports. The following step is where you choose the list of accessions that are included in the trials. And then you can also choose another list of accessions that will be used as checks and those possibly marked as controls in the final field layout. The following steps after this are where you kind of choose the design parameters for the field trial and also how you want your plots to be numbered. And the final output is this sort of graphical display of the field layout and the uh, specific plot information in this table below this. So you can verify that the generated layout is something that you approve of. And if it looks good, you can save these trials to the database, or you can go back and tweak some of the design parameters or redo the randomization that the website does. And you can and, uh, verify the new layout and save that. On this slide here, I have just a subsample of what the Excel template looks like if you want to add your own uh, field trials to the database. So this doesn't have all of the columns listed. I had to remove some so that way it could uh, be displayed on the on the slide here. But basically what you have is each plot in the Excel, uh, each row in the Excel uh, template is a plot. You have your trial level information on the left uh, side of the columns and then the right columns are sort of your plot level information. So you give it a trial name, you give the location of the trial and the design type, and then for each plot, you give the plot a unique name. You tell, um, you give the accession name so you know which germplasm line is in the plot. And then you can give the plot number. And then you can give the field position with the row and column numbers. 
So once you have this template filled out, you just upload this to the website and it will create the trials for you. And it's nice that you can have multiple trials in a single file. So if you're adding multiple trials at once, all you have to do is upload this one file and we'll create all those trials for you. So once you have the trials in the database, you'll wanna record some trait observations for those trials. So again, there's two ways to do that. The digital ecosystem way is to use the Android Fieldbook app, which is an Android tablet app that's developed by the PhenoApps team. Um, which is developed by uh, Jesse Poland's lab out in Kansas State. And what you do is you load those trials and plots and the traits into the Fieldbook app. And there are a couple ways to do this. Now, uh, Fieldbook now supports Brappy, which is the breeder's application programming interface. And that's a specification that allows different databases and programs to communicate with each other. So it's a standardized way for all these different programs and databases developed by different developers to be able to communicate with each other. So now that Fieldbook supports Brappy and Breedbase is fully Brappy compliant, you can pull all the trials and the trade information directly from the website in the app. Uh, the old way of doing this was you would have to download a file from, T3, from the T3 website, transfer that file onto the tablet and then load that file in the app. We can now do that all directly through through Brappy. And then all of your observations will be recorded directly in this uh, tablet app. And again, if you don't want to use the Android Fieldbook app, you can still use your own method for recording observations. So you can record your observations on paper or use a different spreadsheet app and upload your, your uh, trade values later. So this is just a screenshot of the Android Fieldbook app. So the user would select their trial. You would then scroll through and cycle through the plots using these big black arrows here, and then cycle through your different traits using these green arrows, and then directly record your observations right on this screen here. And all of your data is stored on the device until it's ready to be uploaded into a database. So now that you have your observations recorded, you wanna store your observations and you wanna do that in, in the database. It's very easy to do with the Android Fieldbook app. Your observations and your data can be uploaded directly to the database, to T3 via Brappy, or you can still export a spreadsheet from the Fieldbook app and upload that file to the website. And if you're not using the Android Fieldbook app, you can still upload your own observations using a very simple Excel template. So you have one column here with all the plot names. So these are unique names for each plot that were either generated by the trial design tool or the names that you gave in the trial upload template. And then you have a column for each of the traits and the values listed for each of those traits there. So you would just fill out this Excel template and then upload that to T3 and all of your observations will be stored with the correct trials. And again, you can have multiple trials listed in the same file. So you can upload multiple trials at once with just one file. So that's just a very high level overview on how to add trials to the database. If you do have trials that you wanna to add to T3, there are a lot of great resources available. So if you go to the T3 Oat website, if you go to the about menu, there are some links here with more detailed information. So there's a link to the breed base manual, which has a lot of detailed information about all the available features on T3 with a lot of step-by-step -step instructions. Back in September, we held a uh, workshop that showed you how to upload a demo data set for a few trials. So there are videos available that go through each of those steps that are required to add a trial to the database. And then we also have detailed notes and example templates in this last link here. So there's a lot of very detailed information available for uploading trials to the database. And then we're also available to help and answer any questions you have as well. So once you have your data in the database, I just wanna show you a few screenshots of what it looks like once it's loaded in. So what I'm showing here is a trial detail page. So this is the information that's displayed for a single field trial. At the top, you have the trial metadata. So you have information such as the location and the year of the trial, planting and harvest dates if they're set, as well as a description of some notes. 
If you scroll further down, you get some summary stats for the trait values that were stored for that trial. So you have the means, the standard deviations, and CV values for each of the traits, as well as histograms that can be displayed as well. So we have a lot of accession information in the database. So these are germplasm lines that have been added to T3 breed base. And these germplasm lines have been added from the old version of T3, which we refer to as T3 Classic, as well as Pool, which is the pedigrees of oat lines database that was set up by the Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada group. And they have a lot of really great curated pedigree information. So what we're trying to do now is have T3 breed base sort of be the centralized repository for all this germplasm information. So we're merging the pedigree, um, all the germplasm information and all the pedigrees from those two resources into T3 uh, breed base. So this is an accession detail page, and this has all of the information that we have for a single germplasm line. So we have information such as synonyms. So we have all the alternate names for a single line. And we also have developed a, a synonym search tool, which will help you find the database entries based on variations in names that we might have. They're able to search on all of these synonyms. We also have registered accession numbers, such as PI numbers for GRIN, which allow us to uh, make links to external databases. So we have links to GRIN, as well as grain genes for any entries that they have in their database as well. And then we also have information on uh, some notes that we have gotten from Pool. And we have a lot of pedigree information. And there's two ways that T3 stores uh, pedigrees. The first is as a PERDI pedigree string. So that's just sort of a free text field that has the PERDI pedigree string. And a lot of those can be pretty complex and we don't try to parse those. Uh, we're hoping to be able to parse some of the simpler ones soon. But right now they're just sort of, sort of stored as is in this PERDI pedigree field. And then all the curated pedigrees that we've gotten from Pool are parsed into their male and female parents. And that allows us to populate this interactive pedigree viewer. And for this, we have, you know, we're displaying the pedigree for Esker and it allows you to navigate up through the ancestors so we can see the parents and you can click all of these different arrows and see and navigate throughout the entire pedigree tree. You can also see the descendants as well. And for some of the largest um, pedigrees, we've noticed that the pedigree viewer is a bit slow to load. That's something that we're currently working on and we're hoping to have fixed soon. So if you do load a, pe a pedigree that's um, you know, fairly slow, that's something we'll have fixed soon. So last, what I wanna talk about is sort of data exploration. And I think the strongest, the best tool for doing this is using the search wizard. And this will allow you to filter the entire database using different uh, data types, such as year, trial, trait, or accession. So this allows you to create custom subsets of data as well as combining data from different uh, sources. And then you can also download your filter data directly from the search wizard. So you can do all of this on a single page. So this is a screenshot of the search wizard. And what you see is that there are four columns here and you start on the left and then you add additional filter criteria by moving to the right. So in this example, the first data type that I selected is traits. So you select that, it will list all 134 traits that we have data for in the database. And then you can select which traits you're interested in. So in this example, I've just selected lodging severity as my trait filter. And then the second filter criteria that I have is locations. So I select locations and there are 55 locations that have data for lodging severity. And in this case, I've just selected all of the South Dakota locations here. So out of those 55 locations, I've selected eight. The third filter I've selected here are trials. So there are 21 trials in the database that have data for lodging severity in these South Dakota locations. So in this case, I've selected all 21 of those trials. And then if I wanna filter that even more, I can select another filter criteria. And here I've selected accessions. So there are 21 accessions in these trials, in these locations with this uh, trait value. 
And in this case, I've just selected five of those accessions that I'm interested in. So once you have a filter data set, what you can do is just further down on the page is you can download data uh, based on your filtered data selection. So here we can download phenotype observations. So we'll download lodging severity uh, data for those 21 trials, just with a single click of the button right here. And then if you want related genotype data, it will look for any genotype data that we have in the database for the selected accessions. So I've selected those five accessions up here and we can download genotype data for those five accessions directly in the search wizard right here. So just to summarize again, T3 strength really comes from its ability to combine phenotype and genotype data from all of these different data sets. And that allows us to create these advanced tools such as the PFI variety selector tool and the automated GWAS that Jean-Luc had presented earlier. <laughs>